It has been a fantastic weekend of soccer. And so we got plenty to break down today on Pitch Side Weekly, including the big Man U Liverpool title challenger clash at the top of the Premier League table. Also, a fun weekend in the Bundesliga and why I've been enjoying watching that league a lot recently. And finally, Ozil has finally sealed his move to Turkey away from Arsenal. So we'll talk about all that and more coming up on Pitch Side Weekly. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not a type of brother to play with. See a lot of people acting like a, oh, yeah. Old ball play sounding like haters. We the young kings of this generation, oh, yeah. What's up, y'all? Welcome back. Pitch side with Parker. Happy Monday. Happy Martin Luther King Day to everybody out there. Hope you're enjoying the day off and, of course, reflecting on, you know, what the day means to everybody. Before we get too far, be sure to leave a like on this video before we even get started. That's what we do around here on this channel. I would love to see 10 likes on this video. So if y'all could make that happen for me, I'd appreciate it. And also, we're doing a giveaway right now. I just passed 200 subscribers. I was giving away two Visa gift cards. One has already been claimed because he was the first person to complete the giveaway. Shout out to Ben Ramos for that. But there is still one more that you can get. Details are in a separate video, which will be linked right up here. So go check that out if you haven't already and then come back to this video. So without further ado, let's jump into the first topic. I'm going to start with the Manchester United and Liverpool game, which I would describe as entertaining, but also boring at the same time, if that makes any sense. Maybe engaging is a better word to use than entertaining necessarily from a footballing standpoint. But just with the amount of talent that was on the field on both teams, it's hard not to have enjoyed at least sections of this game or just the way that it played out tactically and all the players, all the matchups. I mean, you had the likes of Wijnaldum and Pogba playing against each other on the same side. You have Bruno coming up against Thiago. And then you have Mo Salah randomly getting clamped by Luke Shaw, which turned out to be a great battle over there on that flank. Um, so there was a lot of interesting battles and a lot of people have been focusing on the players who did not really play well because of course that's kind of how the internet works. A lot of people slating, you know, Rashford or Bruno or Mo Salah, you know, Mane, whoever they, they feel deserves the ire today. But I want to focus on some players that I actually thought played really well in this game. First of all, Thiago was the best player on the pitch. I gotta say, I'm, I'm, frankly, I'm embarrassed about the lack of games that I've watched Thiago play in his career because now that I'm seeing him in a more visible place in the Premier League, I, I am regretting not watching more of him in the past. This dude is just phenomenal. Like he absolutely bossed the game. The way he both is able to keep the ball moving, but also break up the play, and he's just one of those players that can think three, four steps ahead and his touch is incredible, his passing range, phenomenal, just class player, I thought he was the best player on the field, and he really, not only was Liverpool's heartbeat when they had possession, he also did a really good job against Bruno, considering that they were playing very much in the same area of the field, he did shut down a lot of passes to Bruno's feet, and Bruno had a pretty terrible game, so um, credit to Thiago. I thought also for Liverpool, Allison played very, very well, you have to give him a shout out, especially for the save on Bruno in the second half. It was a great foot save. You know, I appreciate good goalkeeping. You probably know that if you've watched a lot of my videos, but that shot that is hard and low just to the outside of your standing foot is one of the most difficult saves to make as a goalkeeper. And in this case, it was very close to his foot. He kind of just had to flip it out and do the little kick save, but Nonetheless, great reactions from Allison, and he made a lot of important plays in that second half, and Man United could have easily won that game. And then also, I thought Fabinho played really well. Like, he's had to fill in at center back, and it, he hasn't missed a beat. I mean, he's looked like one of the best center backs in the league, to be completely honest. Like, he's been phenomenal back there. So, you know, shout out to him as well, just it, proving the versatility, and that move being able to rely on him at center back, you know, you can toss in a Nat Williams, you can toss in a Jordan Henderson as they did against United at the other center back spot. And Fabinho is good enough to kind of hold it down for both of them. So that has been crucial to Liverpool even getting to where they are this season, even if, you know, it hasn't been necessarily what they've expected. And then on the other side of the ball, I basically got to shout out all of United's defensive players because Lindelof and Maguire had just an unbelievable performance you know, the, the redemption arc of Harry Maguire so far this season has been 
pretty crazy to watch from the mess that he got into in Greece and then the 6-1 against Tottenham everybody was up in arms they wanted him gone they hated him and some of the plays that he made yesterday you know he dealt with all the crosses which of course is always paramount against Liverpool there was one really really good block that he made where Liverpool did a nice little slick passage of play Robertson had all the freedom on the outside and he whipped a perfect ball to the back post I don't remember exactly who was coming on to it they had a perfect chance on goal and Maguire just stepped across and blocked it right as the shot came in he knew he couldn't get to the cross but he still blocked the shot I was just in awe of that play so them two were phenomenal at center back um, and then Luke Shaw as I said I don't know where that came from from him either but he put Mosul on his pocket um, and if he keeps playing like that, Man United looking serious. And honestly, to keep Alex Tellez out of the team, that's that's pretty impressive from Luke Shaw. One of the occasions where you see that signing a new player out of position has improved the levels of the other ones around him, just trying to fight for their spot and stuff. But yeah, bigger picture, you know, if we look at the table, United States top, I think the draw was clearly a better result for them. Liverpool now have seven draws on the season and nine wins they only have one more win than West Ham this year at times they've still looked like the best team in the league but you start stacking up these dropped points it makes a huge huge difference as somebody who was an Arsenal fan last year and they had I think the most draws in the league those points disappear really fast the difference between one and three is massive shout out to the garbage truck but yeah they're now in fourth place and perhaps the biggest winner of the day might have been Manchester City even because they still have a game in hand over the other two and if they won it they would be ahead of United by one point maybe it's an all Manchester title challenge now I don't know I don't think Liverpool are out of it we have this pattern now that has emerged with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer where in the big games against the other title contenders or teams that they see as a big threat in the Premier League they've shut down and they've gotten these nil-nil results they did it against Chelsea they did it against Manchester City now they've done it against Liverpool even when they played Arsenal I mean that game could have very easily ended uh nil-nil but for the one penalty that Arsenal scored so there is clearly a pattern here you could call it trying to you know Mourinho your way to a title that's kind of how it feels a little bit to me but I think the difference between the way that United has done it and the way that Spurs have done it this season is that Spurs try to play that way in every single game under Mourinho whereas at least United when they play a team that's worse they're able to just crack them open keep the ball play a little more fluidly and they only do this really in the big games and that's a strategy that has worked before to win the title it's not going to work when Liverpool and Manchester City are at their best but this year they're not at their best and it might just be enough for United so it's a very interesting strategy i personally don't see there being a lot of consistency in that i don't think it's super replicable but like i said they've already played all these teams once and succeeded so if they can manage to scrape a couple results in the return fixtures and then just beat everybody else they could very easily win the title so yeah that's where we stand right now be sure to leave your thoughts on liverpool and united in the comments i know a lot of liverpool and united fans are subscribed to the channel so definitely let me know what you thought about that game uh, i would again i would say engaging but boring kind of at the same time so up next i wanted to talk a little bit about the bundesliga because i've just really been enjoying watching the bundesliga recently i think besides the premier league it's probably the league that i watch most often i just find that i'm constantly entertained in general i feel like more teams play attacking football i feel like more teams press than in the premier league and I think also just because of the way that scheduling is in the English game, we're starting to reach that point in the season where there's been a massive quality drop off, at least in the Premier League. And in the Bundesliga, they actually get a winter break, uh, much like a lot of the other leagues out there. And so the teams still look fresh and it's still exciting to watch them play. Whereas I feel like the quality of a lot of the games in the Premier League has declined. So yeah, I've been enjoying watching Bundesliga. You know, there's so many good young talents. I mean, there's plenty of young Americans that play in the Bundesliga obviously the teams at the top have that Champions League quality as well but all the teams in and around the middle as well like there's just so much young talent that comes through like even if you look at a team like Stuttgart this season who just got promoted but they're already in 10th and uh, shout out to Silas Wangatuka, who it, it just came absolutely out of nowhere and has nine goals already in the Bundesliga this season 
they tied with Gladback this weekend 2-2, um, and, and they're having a phenomenal season. So, like, even random teams like that are really good. But, yeah, anyway, this past weekend, there was some decent games in the Bundesliga. On Friday, Union Berlin beat Leverkusen, and Leverkusen were top of the league for a while in Bundesliga this season, but Union Berlin have been having a great season in their own right. I believe they're in fifth place now after the weekend. They've been a really fun story and a fun team to follow as well, and Leverkusen have hit a massive fall off ever since they were at the top of the table a couple months ago. And then you had Wolfsburg and Leipzig drawing 2-2. You know, once again, just a very open game. Wolfsburg had the better of that game, to be honest. And Leipzig, I think, were lucky to get away with a draw. But again, two very exciting teams to watch. Wolfsburg are in sixth this season. Leipzig, I believe, are in third. Title challenge probably off the books for Leipzig this season. I think they really have missed Timo Werner. They play without a striker a lot of the times, like in this game. They played Emil Forsberg as a false nine. They just play like five attacking mids and kind of just let them do whatever the hell they want which sometimes turns out great and sometimes just provides a massive lack of goals. <laughs> also, Dortmund have been dropping points just left and right this season. Um, they drew with Mines, who are in the relegation spots right now, so that was a really bad result for Dortmund. Um, they've got a new coach in, and they looked to be doing a little better with him, but definitely a trip up against Mines that they were not expecting. As things sit now, Bayern did win at the weekend, and so they are back in first place. And I know a lot of you, as I'm, you know, saying nice things about this Bundesliga, you'll be thinking, well, how can it really be interesting if Bayern just win every year? And yes, that's true. Yes, it's probably going to happen again this year. But even Bayern this season, they just got out of a run of, I think, like seven or eight games in a row in the Bundesliga where they allowed the first goal and they didn't lose any of those games. They won some, they drew some, but there was always a comeback. And so even them, they've looked a little fragile this year. Their defense has not been nearly as good as it was last season. Definitely now that Kimmich is back, um, they have looked a little bit better. Although they, even they, they lost in the German Cup this week to Holstein Kiel. Even Bayern have looked a bit fallible, although they are now four points clear at the top. So anyway, that's some thoughts on the Bundesliga. Again, I've just really been enjoying watching it, so I would recommend to y'all definitely tune into some games. Like, there are always time slots at the weekend where, you know, you have a Premier League game going on, but it's like Crystal Palace versus Newcastle or something. And it's like, you could watch teams that are in a similar position in the Bundesliga, play each other and it'll be way more exciting than that for instance the Stuttgart and Gladbach game last week ended 2-2 was a really exciting game Gladbach gave away a penalty in the last 10 seconds of stoppage time and those teams are ninth and 10th in the table but it was a really engaging game to watch and if you're trying to get a little taste in the midweek this week Dortmund and Leipzig are playing tomorrow as I'm recording this on Tuesday I don't know when you'll be watching this but definitely keep an eye out for that game as well so finally before we go I did want to talk a little bit about Mesut Ozil who is finally gone from Arsenal. He's completed a move to Fenerbahce in Turkey, obviously one of the most massive clubs there. Um, by all accounts, they are pretty much the biggest club. Ozil himself has said that he's been a Fenerbahce supporter his whole life, essentially. That's always been his favorite team in Turkey. So it seems like kind of a dream move for him, really. I mean, I've made a couple of Ozil videos before and I always mentioned that Turkey was a potential landing location and one of the only places that I could really see Ozil ending up. I was surprised by the timing because, you know, you don't usually expect big moves in the January window. Given that they had gotten to there only being six months left on his contract, I kind of figured he would just stay through the end of the year because he did say that that was his intention with Arsenal, but Arsenal apparently has offered to pay out Ozil's contract, which is worth still another $10 million before it expires this summer. So in a sense, Arsenal are paying $10 million to give him to Fenerbahce, which, I mean, Arsenal would have to pay either way, whether he stayed or goes. So I guess it's better to just get him off the books and kind of leave that in the dust and just throw it away, leave it behind. I think as a fan, basically at this point, that's how I feel. I mean, obviously I'm a huge Ozil fan, it's one of my favorite players. Y'all will know that if you've seen my other videos, but it was obviously time to go. Like, I'm sad that he's left Arsenal and it'll leave a big hole, but like, you know, he wasn't playing. He hasn't played for over, almost a year now in an Arsenal shirt. So are we really losing that much? Not really. 
But what it does leave up for grabs is kind of what is his legacy at Arsenal? I mean, I think a lot of people debate whether he is a legend at Arsenal or not. I think that word gets tossed around a little too much. I would not call him a legend. I think he will always be a fan favorite. I think he will always be somebody who is remembered fondly with Arsenal, but legend might be taking it a little far. He never won the league with Arsenal. He did win a bunch of FA Cups, certainly helped bring the trophy drought to an end, but getting close to an assist record, but not getting it and winning some league cups uh, doesn't make you a legend in my book. The other thing that it leaves up for grabs is the number 10 shirt. And apparently both Lacazette and Aubameyang have already joked about taking that shirt I imagine Aubameyang will be fine keeping the number 14 shirt, of course, made legendary by Henri, but apparently Lacazette really wants the 10 shirt. Ah, God, I hope they don't give it to him. It's already enough for Lacazette to hold the 9 shirt, but at least that one doesn't have as much history at the club. If you give the 10 shirt to Lacazette, like, come on. I think at this point, honestly, assuming Arsenal wants to make Smith Rowe a part of the long-term plans, give him the 10 shirt, because that number 32 is ugly as hell on the field. I don't like that. I'm the type of player that... I want the starting 11 to wear 1 through 11. I know it's super old school, but like when I play FIFA, I change the numbers so that they all are 1 through 11 in my starting lineup and they correlate to what the players do. I'm sorry, Lacazette is just not built like that. Like he thinks he's some world-class number 10 and he, he's just not. Like, yes, that is how he plays. He likes to drop off kind of, you know, second striker or false nine, whatever you want to call it, which historically is the 10 position, but... I just don't see it, man. I just don't see it. Anyway, I don't know. Wanted to chat about it briefly. I'm happy for Ozil. I think this is the perfect move for him, really. It's a league that will certainly fit his style and his speed of play a little bit more. I think the fans are already embracing him. And it's just the right move at this point in his career. Clearly, the Arsenal chapter of his life story was was kind of done and dusted. So helps everybody move on. And in the end, to me, that's, that's kind of a win-win, even if Arsenal are kind of taking an L by just paying the rest of his contract and letting him go. So yeah, that's all for this week, man. If you have thoughts on anything that I mentioned in the video, be sure to let me know down in the comments. Again, check out the giveaway if you haven't already. It's super easy to do. It'll take you like 60 seconds to complete the steps. Um, and you have a chance of winning a $25 Visa gift card. So, you know, why not? Uh, I'm trying to give back around the channel and, you know, I really appreciate all the support. And it's, it's been awesome recently. I've seen a lot of new people come into the channel. So if you are new as well, be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on the post notifications, and like the video if you didn't already. But yeah, that's all for this one. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.